Okay, welcome back, everyone. Today is the 10th of April, and happy COVID spring. I hope everyone's being safe. Um, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be doing a uh, different format than some of the stuff I've done. I've decided to do some how-to videos um, explaining my process through out the various projects that I'm doing and I have three projects that I'm going to be undertaking two three-dimensional pieces and one two-dimensional piece I'm going to be starting with the uh, medallion and let me grab this real quick here is the medallion of Kobe that I did it's a wall relief and I have that up for sale um, I did that because we were all hit by his loss. Um, so these, which are fairly straightforward to create, fairly straightforward to mold, fairly straightforward to cast, it's the easiest among all the projects that I do to kind of get your head around. I'm going to be starting one for a um, my brother-in-law who is a veteran. Thank you for your service, John, and all of you uh, service members. Uh, who's a veteran, is working with a veterans group in eastern Iowa and one of the people that he is in contact with, her grandfather just died. He was a World War II veteran who flew on bomber missions. And so this is an image of him and his wife and I'm going to be turning that into a remembrance relief and I thought I'd take you along on the journey. I already have the blank laid out but I thought I'd take you through and show you what material I use and what tools I use and how I get started. And so today that's the purpose of this video. Okay, to start with, uh, to make life easy, um, I always start with just a piece of three quarter inch ply and you can see on it here I've drawn a, there you can see it a little bit better, uh, drawn a, uh, an X marks the spot along with a cross. Now that gives me dead center of the board. I know these medallions measure 10 inches in diameter. So I measured out from the center, came up with a circle, drew out that circle. Now from there, I use an oil-based clay. And let's see, there we go. This is a big chunk of oil-based clay. This is probably more than I would need to create one of these medallions. Um, this is the salvaged clay from the piece I just got done doing, Jim. So here is Jim's face. Say hi, Jim. Anyway, he's volunteered to be the salvaged clay for another piece. Now this is, right now it's 50 degrees and blowing cold, so it's chilly outside. This is an oil-based clay. Oil-based clay um, kind of behaves differently depending upon the weather conditions. And this little chunk, even though this is a relatively soft clay because it's cold right now, doesn't want to move very easily. So um, once you have your oil-based clay, you can take little balls of this stuff and knead it in your hand until it gets warmed up and pliable and then work with it. Or you can take chunks off, put it in the microwave, microwave it, keep an eye on it because it turns to molten lava pretty quick and it gets really hot and will burn you. So be careful. Um, microwave sections of it or chunks of it and then you can work with it. Now, before we get into making the disc, the one thing that I want to point out in this, uh, I made one of these and I did the disc by hand and it took me... 15 hours just to make the disc and that was not a tenable situation. So I had a rubber mold made. This is a rubber mold of a, another disc. Now you can see in here, let's see if I get this right. Yes, you can see this is where the disc would be. So when you get your, your clay nice and warm, you can press this into this mold. So you just keep pressing it until you get it filled and you flatten it out. This is a tool that I use probably more than just about any other tool. So I use this tool to make the back side of that um, mold flat. And once it is flat, 
Oops. Knock my tools over. I went and got a number of these. Now these are just simply a Lazy Susan or a turnstile or whatever. I use them anytime I sculpt. And here's the reason why. I've got a stool right here, you see that. Uh, this turnstile, Lazy Susan, whatever they're called, um, fits perfectly on there. But once I have that, if I'm working with a medallion, then I just simply put my base on here. Or I put my, this, is, this will become my working platform. Put that on here. Now let's pretend that this is full of clay. Then I just take the clay and I just line it up with my circle that I've already made on the board and I tap it and out it comes. The reason why the turnstile is helpful is because when you sculpt you need to see something from different angles and it allows you to turn it easily. Now this would work just as easily if I had that big 70 pound head on here of Aretha Franklin which is yet to be cast or something simple and light like this five pound block of clay. So it really does allow you to look at your piece from different angles. You're not constantly picking it up. I highly recommend it. It's one of the great assets. So we're going to pretend like this is a Bob Ross studio. I've already got one already made up. So let me show you what it looks like when it's done. This is another board with another blank. You can see there's the marks marking the corners. And I had a 12 inch circle and then there's a 10 inch circle. You can see that's nice and flat. I've spent just a couple of hours shaving that down and making it nice and flat and truing the edges. Now that's going to give me a foundation. That will be my blank. This is now a blank. Consider this a canvas for a small three dimensional relief. So these will be bas reliefs. This is a blank for a bas relief sculpture, which is what those medallions are. So now I have my image of the handsome young couple from the late 19, or actually early 1940s, and then I would transfer it onto here. And then I would begin my sculpting. Let me go through a couple of the tools that I use so that you have an idea. Um, because from here on out, once I transfer the image to the clay, essentially all I do is I draw the image because the clay is impressionable. I take a red ballpoint pen and I draw, that way I can tell where I was in the image and it leaves an impression into the clay and then I get all the proportions and the the angles of the image and the features of the image lined up perfectly. Let me go over some of the other tools that I use that way you get an idea. Um, I already knocked a bunch of them over so let me call them out into the light so that way you can see them. So I showed you this tool before. Well I have another one, this is the other one that's doesn't have as steep an angle, or this is more steeply angled. Then I have a whole bunch of wood tools. These are my wood tools. And they're different things like this, or they're shaped like that, or they look like this. And each one of these ends is specifically shaped so that you, you can use it for a different purpose. Then there are small metal tools. And then um, just to various other things like sometimes I use a kitchen knife. Um, I use markers, believe it or not. So here's one trick and I'm kind of getting off topic, but here. I use just a standard marker because I have found that this opening right here for the marker is about the diameter of the average iris on a human eye. So when I'm sculpting a portrait in life size, I can use this and once I've lined up the eyes where I want them, I can actually go in and imprint this into the clay and it gives me a perfect circle. Oh my God. So, um, yeah, you just, when you get to a point where you start sculpting a lot, you pick up tools, you pick up a basic set of tools, basic set of wood tools, basic set of metal shaping tools, and then you'll find other things as you go, hey, this will work great for that, or hey, this will work great for here, and you just figure out what those tools are. These are my collection of tools. Every artist has their own. 
um, tools are very, very, very individualistic. So we went through the table, the turnstile, the board, how I marked it off, got my parameters, 10 inch, I have the mold for the clay, pressing the clay in, um, the clay itself, how we warm it up to get it into the mold, and then um, I'll demonstrate how I shave it uh, in another video. And then selecting an image that's going to fit on a 10 inch diameter piece and then simply transferring it. But I'll go over that in the next video. So I hope you like this. Um, if you do, do the thumbs up, sir. please um, uh, like, subscribe, and share. Uh, that's the most important thing. Help a, channel, a young channel like this grow. Um, and leave comments in the in the uh, in the comment section. Tell me what kind of light work you'd like to see. You know, what questions do you have about art making? What what processes are you interested in? If I'm skilled in them and I have the ability, I'll make a video on it. So until next time, be well, be good to each other. Thanks for watching.